This is the Iron Trader, and this is the Weekend Edition. Today, we're going to take a look here at auto companies. So we're going to do the charts, and then we're going to do a little bit of twist on those charts. So first, we're going to look here is at Tesla. And then we're going to look at Ferrari. The symbol is race, R-A-C-E. And then General Motors, and then Ford, and then Stellantis, and then Honda, Toyota, uh, Nissan, and then we're going to review some electric car companies, Lucid, Rivian, and Nile. Uh, so it should be a pretty uh, interesting thing. So if you're into the auto trade, this just might be for you. This video is for information purposes only, not a recommendation to buy, sell any stock, commodity ETF. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. All right. First on the docket here is we have Tesla. Now, this is one of my favorite trades because for a couple of reasons, this does big volume, it has big movement, okay, and it seems like it's always in play either up or down. Now, you can trade this both ways, TSLA for the long or TSLS for the short, which was a really good short when uh, Musk was trying to buy, well, actually not trying to buy, he actually bought uh, Twitter, okay, now known as X. Well, he needed that money to pull out of there, so basically what it is is he was draining that money out, draining that money out. The stock just kept falling right on down, as you can see, all the way down here. Okay, so basically that was a really nice short down. So now he uh, moved, I guess, his paperwork from Delaware, uh, Delaware uh, to Texas. Okay, so basically he wants to get paid uh, something like fifty-six billion dollars or a quarter of the company. So I don't know how that's all going to shake out, but you know that doesn't mean anything to us. What we want to do is trade the charts and make money off of the charts. Okay, so here we have the daily. Take, let's take a little peek, Ski, and see what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> here's what they had on their earnings. Now, I always point out this 8 SMA because that's always very, very key. Now, you can see how it just fell off and then it gapped right down, okay? So it rallied right on up, but where did it go? Right into that 8 SMA, and then she just came right on down to even the lower low. But if you look at this pattern here, okay, you have a left shoulder, we have a head, and we have a right shoulder. So you get basically an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Now, what we had here is we, on Friday, we had a, a red candle here, but again, this trades along with the market. The market was sold right off, and then it rallied up, and then at the end of the day, it sold right off. So this is gonna be basically with it. So let's just take a look at the upside first. So what we have first is your high was 203.17, okay, so now, that is basically your gap, but you need to get to this gap fill, which is basically 206.77. That is gonna be the next level if we can rally up. So on the upside, you wanna watch a key 203.17, and then we wanna watch this level here, which is basically 206.77. And then what we do is we look to the bottom of this candle. You're looking at 207.75 uh, uh, right here. Uh, and then what we do is we take a look here. What we have there, you've got 208.74. And then we can start looking to the tops here, okay? So you got uh, 212.73. We have 215.65. Uh, then we have your 217.18, which is basically this price channel coming across right there. Now, again, if you get above, what we have is a nice 50 SMA there, sitting at 220.87. You have your Hondo right above it, 227.87. And then we have 233.41, uh, which is your 200 uh, SMA. So, okay, now on the weekly chart, what do we have? Okay, so let's just take a look. So we're gonna look here basically at this 210 level here. Okay, 210.22, that is your eight SMA. That's very, very key, and then we wanna watch this uh, uh, 200 SMA here, 221.49, and then you have 224.02, and then what we do is we come right on down here where we'll see this 21 day at 226.47, and then your 100 day at 229.63, um, uh, which is all right in this area here. The key is going to be a close above this 203.17 and this gap fill at 206. Uh, 77. That would be your next upside target. Then we can follow it all the way up until we get to this price channel at that 217.80, and then we can watch that 50-day. Now, the 50-day is coming on down. You're uh, 100 down. You blow that 200-day. But again, if this 8 SMA, see how this curling up very nicely? 
If that can come above that 21 day, you can reverse that real, real quick like, okay? So you always want to watch that. So now let's look at the downside. Well, you always want to watch the existing candle, the previous day's candle, which is this right here. So on the low end, you're looking at 197.40. That's the target that we're going to be looking at, 197.40. And then we can come to the top of this candle. You're looking at 194.73. And then we have your key 21 day here at 192.79. And then we have your 8 SMA at 191.50. These are going to be very, very crucial, okay, on a closing basis. If you have to close above this 21-day, that 192.79 and this key 8 SMA here, that is very, very crucial here on a closing basis. Now, again, if that's lost, well, then we can follow these candles, okay? So what do you have? You have uh, 191.62. We have uh, 189.79. And then we can start following on the bottoms here. 183.35, you have 182.11, and then we can come to this candle, which is uh, 180.06 here, and then we have 177.11, and then your big retest here is 175.01. Now, I always like to show you that here, but realistically, this 21-day and this 8-day are going to be very, very good, strong support level. So if it comes down in that level and it holds it, that's your buying opportunity here to take it up long. Again, if it's lost, I always like to point out to where you're going to go, but your big target is going to be to retest at 175.01. But you do have that inverse head and shoulders pattern here. So even if it comes down to this level here where you have your 21 and your 8 in it, you're still very, very bullish pattern. Okay. So just on the downside, watch that 192.79. Watch this key level 191.00. 50. If that goes below, we follow the candles down to 175.01. The upside, watch Friday's high, 203.17, and then that's a gap. And then we want to watch that fill at 206.77. And then you can work yourself back up to the price channel at 217.80. Uh, and then possibly that 50 day at 287, your 100 day, and then we have your 200 day. Uh, on up here. Now, these are like big levels. You say, oh, it's got to go from 200 there to 200. But remember how fast Tesla can move, okay? Look at this candle over here, okay? So your high was 288 and your low was 188.86. So basically, you had 12 points of range in just one candle, okay? So your RSI here, well, hell, that's got plenty of room here uh, to, to run. Your uh, MACD is, that's bullish. Your green is above your red, looking very, very good. Now, on your weekly chart, well, that's still bearish. Uh, <clears throat> but again, if it can swoop back up here, you're looking okay. Okay, the RSI looking still 41, plenty of room to run. Okay, now let's just look at a different kind of a chart here on Tesla. Okay, basically this is a chart here, uh, Finviz. Okay, you can join us uh, as a member here. Obviously, you can subscribe for 24.96 a month. I don't have this. I have the TOS. I think is the best charting system around. Uh, but I just want to give you another view here of, of Tesla, okay? And I'm going to be doing here on all of these auto stocks here. So you get a little bit different view than the, just the same old, same old, okay? So here basically is your trend lines. You can see where that, where you, you just kept on going all the way on the bottom, hit the trend line, and it comes right on down. Same way with the bottom here. You got a trend line going all the way through. So even if it comes down and you hold that trend line, you're still in very, very good shape here, okay? So you can see how it just hits those trend lines, and then rallies up. So there's that top of that candle uh, uh, right there. And then what you want to do is that's that 202.17. And then we want to watch the bottom of this candle here. That's that 206.77. Uh, so there's your gap, and there's your fill. And then you can go up to your like your 21-day and your 50 and, and your 200 SMA here. But this is just a lovely look. So what you can do here, just go to Finviz. Uh, dot com and you can punch up the same charts for, for yourself here basically you know for free if you want to subscribe you can subscribe i don't i just look at the charts here and just get a different kind of perspective on what is uh actually going on here with the old tesla okay the next one we're going to look at here is race r-a-c-e which is ferrari all right here we have race now this stock here basically is a was for me has been a buy and hold, had it for for years, okay? Uh, a lot of people bought this, they even bought like one share when it was down in 20 areas, just to say, hey, I, I own Ferrari, okay? Well, you actually own one stock of Ferrari, but technically, yeah, I own a Ferrari, okay? So this is basically uh, what a lot of people were doing here. I got a, 
uh, a lot more shares than that here. But this is also one of my favorite trades here because when you look on a weekly chart here, you can see how it's holding that, held that 200 day very, very nice. And you're right to the bottom left and the upper right. See how nice that chart that chart is. Now these they don't sell that many cars. The key is is they sell the cars and they make huge profit per cars. Quality is just off the chain. Okay. So what we want to look here is on the breakout. So if I big this up here just a little bit, okay. So we had a little bit of red candle here, not that big of a deal. So what next in line here is we want to look at is the top up is a. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, 391, uh, 42. That's going to be key. And then if we can get above that, here's your breakout at 393.59. Now, you'd have to use Fibonacci to see where it goes higher. But realistically, $400 is going to be the target. It's going to be like a magnet to a, a, to a fridge here. Okay. Now, here on the downside is you want to watch here uh, this 8 SMA. This is going to be very, very crucial. That 385.45. Uh, very, very crucial. Now, again, if that is lost here, there's a lot of gaps in this chart if you look, okay? So we look to the bottom of this candle, you're looking at 386.27, and then we'll look to the top of this candle, you're looking at 382.89, okay? Then again, if that's locked, look to the bottom of this candle, 378.80, and then we look to the bottom here, you're looking at 375.31, uh, and then we can come here, you're looking at uh, 373.79, uh, and then we have 368.80. Now that's the gap right there, and then this top of this candle here, this would be the fill at 354.69. So big gap, okay? You look at 368.80 and then 354.69. Uh, uh, so big gap in fill, okay? And then, but in the meantime, you just key level is watch that 8 SMA here, watch this uh, 21 SMA here, and then we have your 50 day sitting at uh, uh, 355.40. Uh, um, now, one thing I just wanna do show you here on race is this uh, negative divergence. See where you had a high here, okay? You had an even higher high, okay? So you had a really high in the RSI, and then we had a lower high. See that negative divergence? It's the same thing on the MACD, where you have a high, okay, an even higher high, but you have a lower on that. So you have to be careful with this one. I'm just a long-termer on this thing. I just think it's gonna go higher eventually over time. It's not something I really wanna, I, I trade, because you can look, see the, the, the chart, it's very, very choppy. It doesn't do that much volume. You do like 230, uh, uh, 1,000 shares. It doesn't do that much volume. So it's not a trader, but this is more like a buy and hold. So if it happens to come down here, down to this gap, that would be a really good buying opportunity here to take it higher. Now, when we look on the weekly, eh, it's pretty much the same thing here, but I do like it how it, it just held that 200 SMA, rallied all the way on up here, and now you're where you are. So what you want to do is, on, is you always want to look to the left of your chart. So you look at it, the high is 372.42, and then we come down to 359.41, and then we have 342.80, uh, and then you can come all the way down to 316, and then your big retest here is 285.02. That's if you got a really good, big, dramatic sell-up. But you can see on the weekly chart here, you see this negative divergence here? That's one thing I don't like is where you have that high here, really high and then you have an even higher here but a lower high here and see this is even where you even put in a peak here and this is even lower see that negative divergence so you always got to keep your eye on that anything that'll give you an advantage so bottom line here the breakout is 393.59 if you that get breaks out of that you're going to 400 dollars easy on the downside watch that 385.45 okay watch this gap this is going to be key that 368.80, and then we have your fill, 354.69. But watch that 21 day and watch that key 50 yesterday. So let's take a look here on the old FinBiz chart and see what she looks like. Okay, here we have it on this chart. See how the nice this looks here? Where you can see you can put the drawings right on in here. See, so that was basically that 200 day, how it was holding very nice. But see that nice series of low, higher lows, higher lows, and then we had a nice big rally on up here. Okay, so now we have this trend line going up here. So again, if it gets up into this area here where uh, you have on top of that candle, which is that basically that 393.59, okay, that might be a top there because look at this candle, it hit it and it came on down. Hit it, came on down. It could be the same thing here and come right on down. So this is another way of actually looking at the chart here. It gives you a little bit of different kind of a view. All right, the next one we're gonna take a look here is gonna be at General Motors. 
All right, here we have General Motors. Now, they got, had a little issue last year because they had the strike and everything that's going on. Uh, the only problem with this is, is they have a couple things. That, that strike cost them dearly. Uh, the wages are going to be really extreme, ex especially when they go forward. Um, okay, so that, that's going to be a little bit of an issue here. And the electric vehicles are not panning out like what they thought they were going to be. They said, oh, we're going to be all electric by 230. And now it's 235. Now it might be 240. In my opinion, it's going to be never. Okay. Uh, so this is how that's all going to shake out. So they were just too fast to glom on to one thing. And now they're saying, well, the administration forced us to do this. I have no idea what it was. But I get the whole electric thing. But you always have to go to the people. It's what do the people want. Okay. It's called choice. Okay. If they want it, they'll buy it. If they don't, they will let you know very, very simply. All right, let's take a look here at the chart. So basically, 4104, that was your high, came in at 39.75. So realistically, you got a double top in play. However, when you look at this chart pattern, see this? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So even if this comes all the way down, you still have an inverse head and shoulders pattern going here, okay? So that's what you have to be thinking, uh, very, very careful of. If you break the 39.75, 4104, that is going to be very, that's going to be uh, uh, next, right on the list very, very easily, okay? So let's just take a look here at the chart. Let me bigger up a little bit here. All right. So look and see how many times we went up. Look at here, okay? So 39.75. And then what do we have? A retest, 39.53. And then another retest here, 39.51, okay? So you tried three times and you couldn't get out, okay? So let's take a look here at the downside first. So what we want to do is watch this 8 SMA. 38.70, very, very key. Now, again, if that is lost here, then what we can do is we can come over to this candle here. You're looking at 38.45, okay? And then we can work yourself down to this candle. You're looking at uh, 38.05, and then we have uh, here on this, you have uh, 37.83, and then we come down to this candle here. You're looking at 37.60, uh, and then we want to come to this because this candle here is your gap. That's 37.40, okay? And then we want to look here to your fill. That's 35.61, okay? So your gap, 37.40, and then we have your fill here at 35.61. Now, this gapped up basically under earnings. It came out big blowout earnings, which was really, really uh, uh, good considering they had the auto uh, situation going on here, okay? The uh, strike and everything. So actually they did... Uh, uh, fairly well. But remember, you have that gap and that fill, and those are like magnets to the fridge. They always get filled eventually. But again, your key levels here is going to be your 3746 and your 3623, and then we can come down to 3413. That is your 200 SMA, and then we have 3294 uh, uh, below that. Now, there is another gap all the way down here, which is basically 3142, and then we have your fill here at 29. Okay, so a lot of gaps here, and there's also, th th that's what I know don't like because eventually that price will come down and, and hit that, okay? But again, we don't worry about that today. We just see if you can break on out. So <clears throat> when we look here on your weekly chart, you've got the same scenario. See, your left shoulder, your head, and your right shoulder, okay? So very, very uh, a good looking chart. The key is we got to see if you can break out. Now, again, if you can break about that, 39.75, 41.04 is going to be your uh, your next uh, uh, target. Now, on the weekly here, what you want to look at is we want to look obviously at that 200 SMA. So you're sitting at 40, 41.10, which is basically that 41.04. Okay, so 41.10. Now again, if you can get above that, then we'll come over here to the top of this candle. You're looking at 43.63. Okay, so if you can get a breakout above this. Then we've got some really nice targets here, okay? So you have 43.63, and then we just follow to the left of the chart here, okay? So what do you have, okay? So you have 45.04, you have um, uh, 46.74 here, and you got 48.30 all the way here to the left. So you have a lot of good stuff here going here on a, on a if you can break out of this key, 39.75 and 41.04, okay? So you do have a lot of good stuff. So Bottom line here, I don't like this. Here's a negative divergence again. Okay, see, we have a high, extreme high, even a higher high, and a lower high. See that negative divergence? 
negative divergence here on your MACD again. Okay, so you got to always keep that in mind. So is this 39.75 a double top that at 41.04? Okay, and this is going to come right on down or, you know, and fill these gaps right here? We don't know that yet. So the key level here to watch, if you're trading this, is that 39.75. Okay, if you can break above, then we know what our targets are. Okay, your 200 day, you come over here to this candle, 43.63, that'll be next and work yourself all the way up here to your 48.30. On the downside, well, you know, you know what you're gonna do. You got 37.46, 36.23, you got this nice gap right here at 37.40, you have a nice fill area going here at 35.61, and then we have a retest of the price channel at 34.34, and then your 200 day at 34.13. So the question is, is it gonna lose that S8 SMA and come all the way down, or is she gonna break on up? But actually, the chart looks very, very bullish here. And realistically, any kind of a pullback, this looks like this is very, very strong going forward. All right, let's take a look at the other kind of chart here. All right, here we have the General Motors. See how nice this is? Okay, so you can see you're right, you're right at that trend line coming all the way on down, okay? But you also have another trend line coming up here, okay? So again, will it hold that trend line? Or will it come down to this gap fill? Or will it hold that even at 21 SMA? But right now, you do, you have to watch the bottom of that candle if it comes down, okay? That is that 3740, and then we want to watch the top of this candle here. That's that uh, uh, 30, uh, um, uh, 3561. So there's your gap, and there's your fill, but you also have a lot of support in between. But these usually get filled, and then and here's your next gap. Okay, so bottom line on that is your 31.42, and then we'll come to the top of this candle here. All right, and that was uh, 29 flat. Okay, so you got two really big gaps here that eventually will get filled. The question is, will they do it now or later? But right now, this is coming right on down here. Okay, very nice. You've been trying to break through that trend line, and so far, absolute nothing. We got to see how it's all going to shake out. All right, the next one we're gonna look at here is gonna be Ford. All right, here we have Ford Motor Company. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, well, you can see here on the chart, let me just see here, okay, you went 13.07. Uh, again, when I remember when Ellen Mullally was running this, com uh, this company here, uh, and everybody said he was from Boeing, oh, he didn't know what he's doing, is it? The stock was all the way down at less than two bucks. I think I, uh, yeah, I think it was like got down to like a dollar something. I, I forget. I think I bought it like a dollar fifty or something like that. And they said, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, he rocked this stock all the way to $22 here. For a guy who never knew what he's doing, I thought he did a pretty good job. And the guy never took a salary. He took $1 a year, but he took stock options because he knew he could turn that company around. And he did an absolutely fun, fantastic job. Now Ford has got these issues here, especially with the electric vehicles. Last year, they lost five billion dollars just on these electric vehicles. So I was at our car lot here, well, it was last weekend, and I went to the Ford dealership, I went to GM and I went to Ford, I went to Ford, I look at those electric trucks, Phew. if you want an electric truck, they got a dozen of them sitting right there. If you want that Mach EV, there's a, you got a dozen of them sitting right there. Now, the electric trucks they had, the cheapest one they had was 75,000, and that Mach EV, the cheapest one they had was 65,000. Okay, so again, for that electric vehicle that my opinion is just not really proven yet, um, they had them all sitting right there. They just can't seem to be selling these vehicles uh, like they thought they could. So they're all sitting right on the lots. Uh, so let's take a look here at the old chart. All right, the key level here to the, uh, let's take a look at the downside first. So <clears throat> you can see how this basically is, is uh, selling off here. So what we wanna do is you wanna watch that 200 SMA. That is going to be very, very key. That's at 21.19. So when you look at Friday's low here, you're looking at 12.26, there's your gap. We looked at the top of this candle here, 12.10, there's your fill. But realistically, the strong is going to be that 12.19. Now, right below that, we have your 21 day at 11.99. And then we have 11.83 is your 50 day. And then you can come down to 11.43 here. And then your big retest here is 10. 83. Okay, so you know, um, you, you got again, you got this negative divergence. See, high above that 70 level, 
an even higher high, and now you're below the 7 level. See that negative divergence? MACD, see that negative divergence? That not good, okay? You just don't really want to see that, okay? So here on the upside, well, you want to watch Friday's high. That's 1251, and then we want to come to this 1267. That is your 8 SMA here, and then we have above that, you have uh, 1279, and then you have 1290, and then we have your retest there at 1307. Now, here on the weekly chart here, let me just figure up a little bit here. Okay, you got good support here. You got that 50 SMA at 1218. You got 1190 uh, uh, right below it, and then 1143. So basically, you know, it lines up pretty nice here with the old 100 SMA. So we got to see how that shakes out. The key is you have to get back above that 200 day at 1250, and then we have your 100 uh, day right above it at uh, 1281, uh, and then we have 1298. Uh, uh, basically on this price channel that we need to get it. And then your breakout is going to be 13 uh, here, 07 here. But realistically right now, uh, when I look at this chart, I if, if you could hold this 200 SMA here, then that might be a buying opportunity. Or at least hold this 21 and 50 day here. This stock just moves way too slow for a guy like me. I'm more of like a Tesla thing. I got I need four, five, six, seven, eight points a day. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is very, very slow. This is more like a buy and hold, and maybe she'll go higher, that kind of a nonsense. Okay, again, on the upside, you want to look at that 1307. So if you can break above that, then what we do is we come up to the next price channel here, which is this candle, okay? So you're looking at uh, uh, 1344. Then we'll come right across to this price channel. Uh, you're looking at 1398 here. And then we have a gap up here, if you look. Okay, so you look here, it's 1463. There's your gap. And then look to the bottom of that candle is 1491. So, okay, so your gap, uh, 1463, and then 1491, there's your fill. And then 1542 is your big uh, retest. Now, you can look at this here. You could say, ah, it's a left shoulder, kind of a right head and everything, but it, not really. You, you can say the same thing here, left shoulder, head, possibly if it comes down here and holds, you could see it. It's just, I don't know, it's just uh, nothing to say you want to say, I got to dive into this here again. But again, if it holds this 200 day here or your 21 day uh, or your 50 SMA, it probably be worth maybe taking a scalp to run it right back up to the retest. Um, you know, again, if you just like a little bit of a slower trade. Okay, let's take a look here on another chart. All right, here we have the forward. You can see where the trend line coming right on down here, okay? So now you broke above that nice trend line, but look at the bottom. See, you held it, held it, held it, okay? Not looking too bad, but you broke above this now, and now what we have here, this could possibly be, you know, a bull flag going on here, okay? So we have to see how that's all going to kind of shake out. Uh, here over time. Again, if it sells down, you always want to watch any kind of a targets here, but you're going to probably want to watch this trend line here coming down if it can come all the way down there or possibly even the bottom trend line. So this is just a kind of a different kind of a view for you where it basically went from the top all the way down and now she just kind of kind of pause right here because what we have, you see all this this area right here? Well, this is all basically resistance level. So that's where it rallied right back into, into that resistance level. Now it looks like it's, it's pulling back. Now, is it gonna do the same as what we have here and then fall right back off a cliff again? Or is this gonna be a possible bear flag and then go higher? All right, the next one we're gonna look at is Stellantis. Now, here we have Stellantis, the old Chrysler. Uh, look at how bullish this is, okay? Look at this, all the way up, holding it right up. Look at your 200-day upswing, 100-day upswing, 50-day upswing, 8-day big upswing, curling up. This is a very, very bullish chart. So basically, you have 2601. That is going to be your uh, breakup, uh, breakout, I should say, okay? So <clears throat> the upside is 2601. If you can get above that, then she's going to go right to $30 very easy. But you want to watch Friday's candle. So your Friday's candle, the high was $25.81 and the low was $25.51. Uh, okay, so basically an inside day to the previous day's candle. So $26.01 is going to be your big time breakout and then you'll head to $30. 
Now, if you look at the bottom of this candle, 25, 25, there's your gap. And then we want to come down to the top of this candle, 24.39 is your fill, okay? So what do you have? 25.25 is the gap, and then 24.39, that's your fill. And then we have this nice 8 SMA at 24.57. So you have a lot of good uh, uh, targets here, uh, but you do have that gap in fill. Now, uh, as far as a uh, divergence, you have a little bit here <coughs> of negative divergence, but really nothing that you're going to... Uh, want to actually uh, worry about is what I can see. The diversion just isn't strong enough here to, to really to worry about anything. But again, you have an inside day, so you want to watch uh, the, the previous day's candle. So that 2610 is going to be very key, and that 2525 is going to be very key. If it comes down, you want to watch that gap at 2439, but realistically, this 8 SMA at 2457. Uh, now there are a lot of gaps uh, uh, going on here, okay? So you have 2375, there's your gap. You look at the high, 2365, gap and fill. Then we look to the bottom there, you look at 2326, and then we have uh, 2315, and then <laughs> 2285, and then what we have, you have 2270. So there's a lot of gaps and fills all the way down. Even when you come down here, you have 2158, and then your high is uh, 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 2126. So there's a lot of there. So gap in the fill here, okay? Gap and fill, gap and fill, gap and fill. So there's a lot of that coming down here. But again, if that eight day is lost, we watch those gaps and fills. That's key. But you want to watch that 2290. And then we want to watch that 2283. That is very, very key support here. And then we can come down to your gap, that uh, 2158. And your 2126, and then we have your 2125 uh, uh, right here, your 100 day, and then your retest down here at 2088 uh, here. So this is looking actually a very, very uh, uh, bullish chart here. Um, now you're basically um, overbought conditions there. Your MACD is still bullish. Uh, so we got to see how that shakes out now. Even like on your weekly, well, you know, you're getting to overbought ca uh, ca conditions, and same way with your uh, MACD. But the thing what you you don't want to do is 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 take a full blown price. This is now this would be a scalping stock. If you can close above that twenty six ten, then you can you have maybe a nice good four point run up to that thirty area. Uh, but realistically, this is not something where I say I'm going to go all balls out on a long kind of a scenario here. Uh, you have to wait until this gets a little pullback and this gets a little bit uh, kind of like um, oversold a little bit more. This is really overbought. Now, you can stay overbought for a while, but if you ever looked at a past there, see when it gets overbought, look at what happens. It comes right on down. Okay, so that's what we have to be very, very careful of. That's the same way here. It stayed overbought for a while, but then it came right on down, all the way down here. So you have to be careful with this one, but this is actually a very, very, very bullish pattern. Okay, let's take a look at it on the other chart. All right, here we have a little bit different look, but you can see the trend lines, okay? All the way and up here nicely, but now you're just above that trend line. The key is, can it hold above that and go higher, or it's gonna come down here and fill this gap, okay? So you wanna watch that 2625, and then we wanna watch the key level here, which is 2439, uh, okay? So e either way here, uh, if this rallies up here, eventually this gap will be filled, this gap will be filled, and this gap will be filled here. But right now, you have a nice trend line. See on the bottom there, comes right on up, holding it very nice here. Really nice pattern, but will it get back right into the pattern here like we did here, or is she going to rock it a little bit higher? Okay, the next one we'll look at is Honda, HMC. All right, here we have Honda. Now, Honda's a really good uh, car company. They make a quality product. Back in the day, I used to raise, uh, race uh, Honda motorcycles, and I never really had no issue. They would keep running and running and running, even though you beat the piss right out of them. They would still keep right on going. Um, so I know Honda's always make a good product. They make good generators. They make cars, good motorcycles. You name it, they, they do it, and they make a good quality product I've always fought, found out. Okay, So here what we have here on the old chart. So what you want to look at here, on, let's take a look at the downside first, is we want to look at that 8 SMA. Okay, 34.55, that's going to be key. If that's lost, we'll come to the bottom of this candle. You're looking at 34.28, there's your gap. We come to the top of this candle, 33.88, okay? So 
3428, that's the, that's the bottom, top 3388. There's your gap, your fill, and then next in line here is we have 3364. Uh, now, the next gap that we want to look at is going to be right here, okay? So you want to watch 3307, there's your gap, and then the top of that candle is uh, 3252, okay? So your gap, uh, uh, 3307, and then your top is uh, 3252. Gap, fill, gap, fill, okay? So again, your 21 day is gonna be key support level here. And then right below that, we'll look at the old uh, 100 SMA here, looking at 3214. Uh, and then you have 3209 and then 3150, which is your uh, 200 SMA. But you can see your 200 day on the upswing, your uh, 50 day on the upswing, about right across the 100 day, looking really, uh, really good here, okay? So <clears throat> your RSI came down here, uh, your MACD came off just a little bit here. So we got to see how that's going to shake out. But your MACD here on your weekly looking good. Look like it's just getting started for being bullish. you got a ways to run here on your uh, RSI here on your uh, 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 weekly chart. Now, again, <clears throat> you want to uh, – let me see what we got here. Okay. So here, here's what we have. If you can break out above that key level here, which is 3518, uh, then what we do is we look to the, obviously look to the left of the chart here. This is what I want to show you right here. We have another gap. So this will be your target, 3564. And then we look to the bottom of that candle. You're looking at 3613. So here's your gap, 3564. The bottom of that, 3613. Uh, there's your fill. And then your big retest here, 3682. Now, again, you break above 3682. Well, you're going to 40 bucks. Okay, just simply, you got to go right to that round number. Not probably, you know, $39.95. But anyway, you, you want to head uh, towards uh, uh, $40 if that breaks on out here. So realistically, <clears throat> you want to watch that key eight SMA, very, very crucial. You want to watch that 21 SMA here, and then your 100 and your 50 SMA. But you want to watch this gap. That's going to be key, 34.28, and your fill at 33.88. That's going to be very key. So if it sells, even sells down to there, you're still in very, very good shape here. As long as it holds that 21 day, you start losing that 21 day here. Then we can start coming down to these gaps right here in the fills. And then you can come all the way down here to your, to your uh, 3209 uh, level. Now here on your uh, weekly, your 8 SMA here. Well, that's curling right back up here. Nice. That's going to be really nice support at 3279. And then right below it at 3217. So that 32 level, 32 to 33 level is going to be basically a good support level if all of this here is lost. All right, let's take a look at that on the other chart. All right, here we got your Honda. Okay, so we have your bottom trend line. You can see where she's holding, came right on down there, and then just rallied up very, very nice. Now, when you look at your top trend line, while well, you draw it across, it hit it, and then came down here and possibly hit it again. Okay, so it looks like when it hit it, it came right on off. We got to see if it's going to do right again and do fill that gap that that the thirty four twenty eight and then we look at that fill right here, okay. So you're looking at uh, thirty three eighty eight. So your gap and your fill. We'll see if that gets uh, uh, filled and then before you know it, you come all the way down here to this gap thirty three oh seven and then we have a, a fill here at um, thirty two fifty two. So you know you got two gaps right here and right there. Now is that going to be your target areas? Uh, again, but again, if you can break above this trend line, well, then we can go and work yourself all the way to the top of the candle, which is 3682. All right, the next one I look at is going to be Toyota. All right, here we have Toyota. Now, Toyota is in a very good position because they didn't buy into all of this. Um, you got to have an electric car. What they have is those hybrids. And I tell you what, people really like that. You don't have to worry about it. I can run electric. I can save the earth, okay? I can save a few bucks. But then I can fill it up the tank if I need to take the family on vacation. They got a really good uh, thing good. Plus, they make a really good quality product here, okay? So let's just take a look at the chart. Okay, the upside, well, you know, we all look at Friday's high. Looking at 228.54. And then we'll come to the next day's high. You're looking at uh, 228.64. And then we have... 232.56, that is going to be your breakout. Now, when you look at this RSI here, see, there is no divergence here. This is just a bullish chart, okay? Now, this can go sideways for a while. You are in overbought conditions here, but you can go sideways. 
This here is, is uh, bullish, your green is above your red, so that's still looking good. So on the downside, what you want to watch is this key ADSMA. See how that holds, okay? That's 226.70. So when you set your charts up the 8th, the 21 day, the 50, the 100, the 200 day, don't let anybody tell you anything different with price channels. They work. Just look at what's going on here. See how nice they work? Now, again, if that 8 day is lost, 226.70, then what we do is we just follow the candles all the way down here. So what do we have here? You've got 224.48 here. This uh, candle here, you're looking at 223.56. And then we come here, you're looking at uh, uh, 220, uh, 86. And then we want to look at this candle because the bottom of this candle is 211.82. That's your gap. And then we want to look to the top of this candle at uh, 203.18. There's your fill, okay? So your gap, uh, 211.82, and then your fill, uh, 203.18. Gap, fill, and then we have your 21 here in the center. Okay, that's what we always want to look. Now, there's another gap here. Look to the bottom of this candle. You're looking at 197.07, and then we look to the top here, 194.39. So you have another gap, another fill here, and then we have another gap down here, okay, 189.57, and then the top of this candle is 186.66. So a lot of gaps, a lot of fills. Okay, so we always want to watch those, but the key level is watch that 226.70, watch this 211.68, Watch this 196.91, and then we want to watch 189.36. Uh, that is going to be very, very uh, key. But when you look at this chart, look at that. Eight days rolling up, 21 days rolling up, 50 days rolling up, 100-day uh, uh, rolling all up, 200-day rolling up. Very, very bullish uh, chart. Now, look how nice this held all that key support level how many times, okay? Very, very nice. Once you got above that 200-day, then she ripped up nicely, but look how nice it held that 21 day all the way on up. So when then when you if you're going to trade this, you put that 21 day on all time frames. Okay, I use a tick chart, a one, a five, a 15 minute, an hour in the chart, a four hour chart, daily, weekly, monthly. Put the same eight 21, 50, 100, 200 day right on your chart and with price channels right here. They work great. Look how many times it hit it. Okay, so if you know this came down. And it hell holds that. That's your buying up. Okay, it came right down, held it. That's your buying up. See how nice that works? Okay. So when people say, ah, well, I say the uh, charts are an after thing, and they don't think, ah, oh, that's all bullshit. Charts work. This is your roadmap. You just got to know how to read them. That's the key. Now, when we look here on your weekly chart here, this looks like a topping tail here at that 230, uh, 256. We got to see how that all shakes out, but that does look like a, a topping tail here. Your RSI. Getting pretty tight uh, up here, and we are overbought here on your RSI, on your uh, um, daily chart. Okay, let's take a look at another version of it. Okay, here we have your Toyota. Well, you can see here your bottom, how nice it held all the way through. See your trend line? It was holding your trend line here, and then now she just, boom, right on up here. But you got to watch this key level right here, okay? So that is that 211.82. And then we watch the top of this candle here. That is that uh, 20318. There's your gap. There's your fill. There's a lot of other gaps and fills all the way through, like I pointed right here and right here and then right here and then right here. But this is the big boy right here. And then we can just follow this uh, all the way down. If it does sell off, the gaps and the fills usually gets right down to the to the gap first. Okay, and then it might just rally up here. But if it really just sells off, it'll get right down to that, that fill level. So that's what you always Got to watch. But this is just another perspective of the old Toyota. All right. So next we're going to look at some electric vehicles here. Okay. Here we have electric vehicles. Now, here in the U.S., okay, they have some kind of an idea that if we have all electric vehicles here, we are going to save the whole world here from climate change and the whole nine yards here, okay? Let's just do a, let's just a quick review here on electric vehicles before we get into Lucid. All right. Here's the thing on electric vehicles. The main part of electric vehicle is the battery. Okay, so that's the biggest portion. Well, it, to make a battery, it takes lithium, nickel, and cobalt. You don't go to Walmart and say, hey, give me some lithium, okay, or some nickel or some cobalt, and I'm gonna put a battery together. It doesn't work like that. Those are mine products, okay? So you actually have to go and strip mine, okay? And if you ever just Google strip mining, 
you can see how bad that is for the environment. That's way worse than any car on the road, okay? That's the first thing, okay? And that makes up the big por par uh, uh, portion of the car. Now, the next thing no one is talking about, no one, is those batteries are good for probably about eight years. It's all they warranty it for, okay? So first thing is, there's no resale on these electric vehicles because everybody knows they have to replace them. I replace them, you're talking fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to replace that battery, okay? So you have to be very, very careful with that, okay? So that is that is a very, very next pro problem. But the biggest problem is, is no one is talking about what are you going to do when all these bad bees dead lithium batteries, okay? This is toxic material. I don't see anybody coming out and says, hey, oh, don't worry about it. We're just going to remanufacture this thing and we're going to, you know, redo this thing. And we're going to I don't know how you're going to redo it. See, that's one thing about it is because electric cars haven't been around. Tesla's been around for a while, but they did such a small volume compared to the rest of the companies. Okay. But what if you do a big volume? What are you going to do with all those batteries? How are you going to say, I'm going to repurpose these batteries? Or I'm going to redo these batteries. No one's talking about that. I mean, that is complete toxic material. So when you're looking at the environment and everything, always take that into consideration, okay? See, I'm the guy uh, that basically says America is two things. It's freedom and it's choice, okay? That's how I look at it. So if you're going to go to a car lot, you should be able to say, hey, if I want a, a gas vehicle, if I want a diesel vehicle, if I want a hybrid, I want an electric vehicle, you should be able to make the choice you want. Just like today, hey, some people like Cadillacs. Some people like a Ford Mustang. Some people like trucks. Somebody says, no, I want a Lamborghini. That's your choice. You should be able to buy what you want, what you like, what you enjoy. You only live once, okay? So that's the thing about electric vehicles is I don't have any problem with electric vehicles. I just don't think you're, you're, you're not to that point now where you can say, hey, I feel very comfortable because look what happened over the winter here at Christmas time in Chicago with the Teslas. All right? I mean, you got Teslas sitting there. And they, they don't physically charge in the winter unless you're sitting in your garage, yeah. But a lot of people that have condos and townhomes and et cetera, they don't have that garage. They got to go through a charging unit, okay? And they won't charge. They're pushing them off the lot. There's also other sides to that, okay? So always look at it. Another thing is, too, is these charging system. Okay, where, where are you getting your power from? Okay, well, there's only so many things. Power plants, well, you can have coal. You can't. That's dirty. Nuclear, not in my backyard. You got natural gas, which is which is the majority of it. And you have fusion. Now, fusion only works in certain areas. Then you have wind and solar, which is only 18, 19%. But just think a couple of years back when all the windmills in Texas and they froze, man, they didn't have power for like 10 days. So there is always, for every positive, there is a negative. So I'm a real believer is if when you go to a car lot, you should be able to buy what you want, okay? That's the thing. Another thing is, too, is a lot of times what people aren't looking for are electric vehicles say, I'm going to save the world here with the climate change. You're not, okay? You have to think about the airplanes, okay, the helicopters, the military, the agricultural, the semis, okay? You're not going to do that all in electric. It's just not going to happen, especially like airplanes. Right now, they have uh, electric airplanes that can do two, four passengers. Yeah, they're more like a drone, okay, than they are an actual plane. You're not going to fly two, three 400 people on these planes, that's just not going to happen or fly overseas in a situation like that. So let me give you some really quick stats, okay? One airline starting, okay, takeoff and landing going 150 miles, one plane is equal to 257 cars on the road, okay? How many uh, uh, flights do we have in the United States? $44,000, 44,000, 44,000 flights a day. So take 44,000 times 257, what do you have? That's how many cars is equal to on the road. Okay, another quick fact here is, okay, so Bezos, he, he wants to send everybody to space and give them a 10-minute ride. Okay, you give me half a million dollars and I'll give you a 10-minute ride. That one 10-minute ride in that rocket is equal to 267 planes taking off, going 100 miles, and landing. Okay, so one plane, okay, is equal to 257 cars. Okay, and then one jet is equal to 267. So take 267 times 257. That's how many cars just for a 10-minute ride. But what does Bezos do? He goes to the climate change people, gives them $100 million, and all of a sudden the problem goes away. Okay, it was very interesting thing at the climate summit there. 
Uh, they all they're all lined up. There's 147 planes there on the old uh, tarmac. And one young kid came up and says to these people, and they're talking, they're talking, discussing climate change and all this. And one kid stood up. He says, "How do you guys get here?" And they all didn't, didn't know what to say. And all those jets were just lined up, and they're coming up here with the carbon credits, and they're doing this and doing that. You know, you know, you're not fooling anybody. Okay, you're getting around the world here. What did what did Taylor Swift uh, just to get to the Super Bowl? She went like twenty thousand miles. Okay, well, how many cars is that equal to on the road? Okay, so now me, I have nothing against electric vehicles. Might even get one down the road if they can progress enough here, where you can get the mileage out of it. And you have charging system where you don't have any kind of a hassle. But I think you know, you know, it should be. Basically, freedom and choice. Go to a lot, pick out exactly what you want. If you want a electric, if you want a gas, if you want a diesel, if you want a hybrid, that's your choice. Drive what you want to do, offer everything. And that's what Toyota's doing with them hybrids. People are going to that. All right, all that big speech being said here, let's get over to Lucid. Now, Lucid is having a hell of a time. And the other thing about Lucid is, um, you know, as far as the money wise, now they produce a really nice vehicle. I seen it at the auto show. Very nice. Okay. The loose is a very, very nice car. The problem is, is, is what kind of a demand do you have? So let's look at the chart here. Now, obviously it came down, but you held it right here on the bottom. Okay. You had a really nice double bottom, came right on up here and then went to a sideways action. Okay. So basically as it's not really a clean but you could say a left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder here. But realistically, what you need to do is you got to get above this price channel. That's three dollars and eighty-two cents. The next level is going to be four fourteen, and then we can come right up here to this uh, uh, candlestick here. You're looking at uh, four forty-nine, and then we have uh, four sixty-nine, and basically your retest up there is five thirty-one, and then we have five forty-one. Okay, so there isn't really much juice in this. This, this stock does a a good, uh, you know, really good volume, you know. So I think this could be a good scalper. Uh, but I don't know about going forward if you're going to really have the juice uh, for something like uh, like this. They're a very small outfit compared to like Generators 4 and Tesla. Tesla has got like 40, 45% of the market, but they got the charging system. They got everything. So realistically, that Tesla is, is the key. And if they keep on cutting prices, you'll take a company like this and just wipe them right on out here. So... What we want to do here is you always want to look at that 50-day, that's 3.72, and then we look at the price channel right above that at 3.82. On the downside, well, you want to watch that 8-day, 3.51, very, very key. If that's lost, you have 3.41 here, you have 3.34, you have uh, 3.26, and then your 21-day at 3.26. Now, again, what I do like about this is your 8-day curl up above your 21-day, rolling up nice. So your 21 day here rolling up this so this could actually be pretty good bullish here if you break out of that price channel at that key uh, 3.82 then hit that 4.41 you could have a really nice here the 5.41 so you could get some uh, a good some a good point and a half out of this very very easily here now if we look at the weekly chart here well you know this basically looks like the net gas chart you know just stair stepping all the way on down here there's just nothing here that says, wow, this is great here. But you're got to look at your eight SMA once that price gets below. But see how it is, how like it just like just like natural gas, you keep hitting that 21 day and it just keeps on knocking it down. But if you can, you can come all the way up here to this 50 SMA here at 3.74 if you can make it there, if it can break out of the old Schneid. Okay. So right now here, your RSI, you got plenty of room to run. This is all, this is, a, you have a bullish trend going here, your green above your red. So this isn't looking really that bad. The key is going to be break um, above this 3.82 and then 3.41, and you can maybe hit that 5.41. Okay, so again, if you can break out, you might get yourself a point and a half there. You know, you could go there, say, 25,000 shares. You know, it'd be worth the, actually worth the trade then. All right, let's take a look at it on the other chart. All right, here we have the old Lucid. Now you can see your bottom, how it's trending. Okay, you hit it, came out right on down. But look at your top here, see? Hit it, your trend line, all the way on down here. So this is basically the opposite of what you want to see. You never want to see, you know, uh, your left down to right. You want to see your left up to right, okay? So this is just the opposite. So basically, you want to watch that trend line. And if you can, then we can come over to the top of this candle right here. Uh, let's see what we got right there. 
So you have that uh, 531, okay? So that would basically be your target area. And then we could work yourself all the way and up here if you could, you know, to get higher. But let's not get ahead of yourself here. You really have to get above that key trend line here first before, you know, you're going to be able to hit this level and then before you can run right on up here. But realistically here, you're holding that nice double bottom area. And we're looking here uh, pretty good here on the sideways action. The thing I don't like about it is you have a top, top, top. Is it going to come all the way down again here? Or is it going to rally uh, right on up here and try to hit this kind of a level here? Now, but again, you know, Lucid, when you look at their car, it's really a quality uh, piece. You know what I'm saying? The car is just a really, really quality piece. The question is going to be, is a demand issue. That is going to be the key. Okay, the next one we're going to look at here is Rivian. Okay, Rivian. Now, you know, I looked at the truck on Rivian. Um, actually, it's a pretty cool looking truck. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this company here is they have enough cash till about next fall. Um, and they're really losing about thirty to $40,000 per vehicle. Uh, so I don't know, unless they can get some kind of a cash incentive, some kind of cash boost, something that'd be interested in this here. I don't know how long they're going to be in business here unless they can turn that around. So let's take a look here at the old chart. So we can see here 2806 here, and then we have uh, 2487. You have 2462. This was a really, really nice double top situation and then brought it all the way in down. Now, if you look at the downside here, okay, we had a low here of 1459, okay? You had a low here of 1477. That's nice, that's a nice double bottom. Ran right on up here, came back in, set in a higher low. So you have a low, higher low, and then a higher low, and now she's trying to rally up. The problem is, see what you have, you got uh, 1673 here, and then your next level here is gonna be 1680. So is this gonna be a double top situation? She's gonna come down or not? So let's look at the bottom first. We need to hold this key ADSMA. You're looking at 1598. That's gonna be very, very key. Right below it here, we have your 1570. And if that's lost, we'll come to the bottom of that candle, 1557. We have 1537. You have 1504, uh, 1474, and then your big retest here at 1459. So it looks like you're you're basically trading this range right here, okay? So you're basically your top is roughly, say, a uh, 1686 level here, and then your bottom is 1459. So this is a good trading range that's going on. Now, again, on the upside, if we can break that 1686 level, okay, then what we do is we can come up to the top of this candle. You're looking at uh, 1802 here, and then we can run right into your 100 day, 1837. We have your 50 day, uh, what are we sitting at? 1852, and then we have your 200 day at 1897. If you can break above all this resistance, a lot of resistance, 150 day, 200 day, then we have a couple of gaps. So you want to look to the top of that candle, 2066. We look to the bottom of that candle, 2076. Okay, so right there, 66, 76. Gap filled, and then we look to the top here, 2194, and then we look to the bottom. You're looking at uh, 23 a 10. Okay, so bottom line here, 2194, um, 2310. Gap fill, gap fill. But the key is this 100 SMA, that's going to be key. Your 50 SMA, 1852, and your 200 SMA, 1897. Very, very key on the upside. Downside, that 8 SMA, 1598. Your 21 day, 1570. If that's lost, 1459 is your uh, retest here level. Now, there's really nothing, uh, no divergence here. This is just basically going up with the, with the trend. Same way here. You, the MACD is bullish. It shows that there is interest going on here. Uh, it's just that you got to be very careful with the Rivian uh, because of the, the amount of debt that they have and the amount of lack of cash that they have going forward here. All right. Let's take a look and put her up on the other chart. All right. Here we have Rivian. Okay. So you can see here your trend line all the way down. Couldn't get through. Make a series of lower highs all the way and down. Now, what we have here is your trend line, but you notice your trend line is on a downswing, okay? See, that's what you always gotta look at, it's on a downswing. So, is it just gonna go sideways into this, basically this box pattern right here, or can we rally up here to your uh, 21 day? But the key level here 
if you can get above all that resistance, is look at the top of that candle right there. Okay, that's the key. That's at uh, a 2066. And then we looked at the bottom of this candle. You're looking at uh, 2076. That's your first gap and fill. And then we looked at the top of this, 2194. And then we looked at the bottom, looking at 2310. So gap, fill, gap, fill, if you can break above all this resistance and break out of this old box pattern right there. All right, last one we have here is NIO, N-I-O. Okay, you got yourself a Chinese company going on here. Uh, doesn't look like a whole lot here, okay? So you got 1618 on top, rallied down, all the way down, been holding it, holding it, support level, rallied up here, and then she just came all the way down. So if you look at this area here, you look right to this gap, see that? That was your double top situation here off of that gap. It didn't even make it to the gap fill. It just hit the top of the gap and then came all the way on down. Okay, so basically right now, what do we have? Let's look at the downside. You want to watch that 8 SMA, 595. You want to watch 592, okay? But your 8D is crossing above your 21 day, so that's not too bad. You've got plenty of here room to run. You're bullish here on your uh, MACD. So realistically, if you can hold that 595, and that 592, you're still very good to go higher here to maybe hit this price channel here going on at 688. And then right above that, you got 708, 749 here, and then we can come all the way up here to 879 on your 200 SMA here. But again, if you lose all this here, then what we wanna do here is look at the bottom of that candle, you're looking at 5.6, and then we looked at the top of this candle here, you're looking at, uh, 5.48, so there's your gap, your fill, and then your retest at 5.30. But realistically, watch that 8 SMA, that 21 day on the downside. On the upside, watch that price channel, 688. Watch that 708, your 50 day, 749, and then 879. What I don't like about this is see how that 50 days on the downside, 100 days on the downside, 21 days on the downside. The only good positive here, 21 days is flattening out here. Is the only positive one is that eight day is curling up here now, but will it curl back down and, and retest here? That's what we have to work. Now, if you look at here on the weekly chart, well, this is this is not looking good here at all. When you love, when you big that up a little bit here, see, look at this. See your eight SMA, that's not good. See your twenty one day, not good. Your fifty day, not good. Your hundred day, not good. Everything's on a downslide here. Okay, so this is not one that I would take. It does. It does good volume. Maybe you can do a scalping situation out of this here, but that'd be probably pretty much it. Okay, let's take a look here on the uh, the other chart. All right, here we have Nile. You can see how you basically topped out right there, 1618. Came all the way down here and just rolling on down. Now, see the bottom trend line, how you're just holding it. Anytime or any kind of a rally, it looks like it just that you wanna go find it. This looks like about the same. If you could rally up a little bit here, I don't know. It just doesn't. It just. I don't like charts like this on the downswing. I want them just the opposite. Low here, all the way up to the right hand corner. Okay. Versus here, you got high down to the down to the corner. That's not really good. This is not a bullish chart. Something you want to get actually get into. Okay. So I'm not sure how all this is going to work out here, but we got to see how she all shakes out here uh, with the auto companies here. Okay. All right. That's what I got for you here on your oil co oil companies on your auto companies here. Uh, so again, um, I'm still a believer in uh, you know freedom and in choice. People should be able to make their own choice, make their own decisions on what they want, what they don't want to do when you go to an actual car lot. So if you want a gasoline, you want a diesel, if you want a hybrid, you want electric, it should be absolutely your choice. I have nothing against electric. Might even look at it down the road. I looked at those. Uh, Ford F-150s, really nice looking truck. Um, but you know, when you look at the, the price tag of that versus like even like a regular, uh, you know, you're $25,000 higher for something to me that is just unproven. That That's that's a big part for me. And I, I think you're rushing this a little bit too fast. You should really get all these charging units set all up here, all the way through the country. And then what you should do is get it where these uh, electric vehicles say, hey, I can get a thousand miles here out of this thing. I can get this, I can get that kind of a situation. Then I would take a look at it and say, wow, this is this is just kind of cool here. But right now I just stick with the gasoline kind of a situation here. But again, you have to look at the whole 
big picture to see what it is because bottom line, it comes down to, you know, what do people really want? They will let you know, do they want the electric vehicles? Do they want gasoline? But right now, I think Toyota and Ford could possibly be the winners out of this with them hybrid vehicles. Those, I think, are really going to be in demand here. You got really the best of both worlds here. So if you run a little bit on power, on electric power, say, hey, you know, I can get the electric power. I get that for, you know, charging my garage. And then I can get the gasoline there. I don't have to worry about on the trips or anything. That might be the ticket going forward. I think a lot of times you have to ease into this and then let the people make the old choice. All right. That's what I got for you today on the auto stocks. Thanks for watching.